What's up, y'all? It's your host, Sensei, and if I give another episode, I'm here with my co-host. What up, y'all? It's DJ Pac-Man here with my co-host, Sensei the NK. We are the breakfast... Oh, wait. We are the brunch collective. Good morning. We pass it now. <laughs> good day to be a Minnesotan. It is a good day to be a Minnesotan. It's a good time. It's... Real quick, have you been feeling the energy switch? No, not at all. I don't think there is an energy switch. Really? No. Have you not been outside in the past seven days? I mean, I go to work. Damn. Tell me why I'm standing in line and a white dude walks up to me and says, Wolves and Four. And I say, Wolves and Four. And that's what it feels like over the past week and a half. So. You know what? You're not wrong. I was selling water and some guy walked past me. I didn't hear what he said. I said, huh? And then when he was behind me, I heard him. He said, Wolves and Four. I was like, ah, you too far now. <laughs> and honestly, honestly. I'm so glad that there's so much love and joy in my city. It's been it's been so long that I've enjoyed being called a Minnesotan. But if you haven't noticed, the Timberwolves are up 2-0 in the Denver Nuggets series. And as a Minnesotan, I feel like I had to talk about it. I feel like I had to talk about it. And you know what? This year, this year has been interesting. This year has truly been interesting. It's been so long since I've looked at our sports team and been like, wow, I'm proud to say I'm part of y'all. Not gonna lie, I'm proud to say we anytime I see them on the court. And the reason why I want to bring this up, sports team or sports teams? Team. I've never said, said that about the Vikings or the Twins. Do you know the Twins are like 10-1 and one right now? The Twins have been good for like the last two, three years. And the Vikings have been <laughs> up there too for the last two years. We, we're kind of having a little run right now. And I feel like people aren't giving it enough respect as they should. Mm, I guess. I guess. When like, was the last time in your life that Minnesota sports were good? Shut up. Stop <laughs> playing with me. I hate it when <laughs> do this bullshit. This is the best you have ever received and ever will receive. Be happy because this is all you're getting. This is it. Oh, God. You know what? This morning I had to pray that Anthony Edwards' ankles did not, like, roll at all. So I said my prayers this morning. So it's looking like we're going to have a good a good game today. A good game today. They play today? Yeah, they play today. They play after the Gunner Show. So, bro, low-key, I was thinking about going to the Gunner Show and then running right over to the Target Center to see if I can catch the, the outspurts of the joy and happiness. And the reason why I bring all this up, hmm. We have not got a chance to witness winning in so long. And honestly, I knew that there was a change when everybody is now being full force saying, yeah, we're going to win this. And it's it feels wild because usually as a Minnesota fan, you don't want to jinx nothing. But we all want to jinx. We all want to jinx. It's not it about here. jinxing. It's about math. If I beat the best team, well, I can beat everybody else. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. That's definitely fair. Oh, Did you get a chance to peep any of the the... The Timberwolves, not Timberwolves, the Suns games? You know what? I did not. I saw a couple of highlights, mm -hmm. um, but I missed all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm glad that Anthony got the ball on his idol. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that um, I'm glad that KD's still balding. I, I hate him. So getting here has been such a difficult watch because of honestly i thought that we really had the sauce and magic when pat bev was on our squad and then it was a pat bev uh jared vanderbilt you know just the whole gritty defensive squad that was the year that we took uh denver to six and while they went and ran everybody else right off the court and the reason why i bring this up because of watching us trade everything and be so willing to go all in at a random moment like that really showed uh, cheer in my heart because everyone thought that Rudy Gobert trade was going to be terrible but me not only do I not think that that's true I think we definitely have you on camera agreeing with me that that might be one of the worst trades in NBA history um, <laughs> I want you to listen they still have to win they have to win for that trade to be even be worth it, they can't. They can't make it to a conference finals. They have to win. Oh, they're. What if they make it to the finals? Is that okay? No, Rudy's contract alone. They have to win. They have to win. Mm, I, I guess. I have I, a four-time DPOY, one of the top five best centers in the league, one of the top five, one of the top five best shooting guards in the league. Oh, so, we have to win. So now he's a top five center. What happened to all the? the I'm the, talking about Cat. I said. Oh. I said Rudy's a DPOY. We okay, got DPOY, okay. top five center in the league, top five shooting guard. Uh, who 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 are we running at that point right now? Uh, uh, not McDaniel's. Uh, Conley. Mike Conley, top five uh, free throw shooter, ain't he? Yeah, so he's something like, like we that. We have he's a really like good, he's something like that. solid scoring team. Mm, that's fair. That's fair. And honestly, when they traded him and brung Rudy Gobert in, I recognized that our defense was going to go completely through the roof. Because when we got rid of, uh, Mc, not McDaniels, we got rid of Vanderbilt and kept McDaniels. And then with the trade, we also brung in um, 
NWA, uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker, bringing in so much defense at one time really set us up to hoop for real. Because of honestly, that's why I like the fact that our superstar is Anthony Edwards because of he really brings out people's dogs. And I've not noticed that in so long with a lot of superstars. I think we got to get to the end of the season before we start calling him a superstar. Oh, why not? Why? He I mean, Cat is our Cat is our superstar. Point okay. blank, period. There's no way around it. I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care if you think he's weak. I don't care if you think he looks like that boogie <laughs> meme where you, uh, you look like he's getting fucked up, but he ended up scoring anyway. It don't even matter. He is our superstar. I don't care how you feel about it. He's been here the longest. He is the veteran. He is the leader of the team. But we gave all the reins to the young buck. That's, gave that's- the reins or that nigga just balled out. Those are two separate things. Uh, I'll put it like this. When we think about the first option, I, I know we're going AE in front of uh, Cat. For scoring? Just first option. Like, the game's on the line. You throw it to AE or you throw it to Cat. Throw that mug to AE. Come on. Let's not, be, let's not do this. I would give it to the shooting guard over the center. Yes, you're right. Hey, that he, doesn't make him not. He's the best shooting. He's the best shooting big man we've ever seen. So, that's the, I feel like that should, be, that should be part of the discussion. I also think that that's a lie. But who are you, who are you throwing over? Kevin Durant. All right. Uh, uh, I don't that, care what position is, he played. He is seven That foot is two. a super lengthy two guard. We got to be serious about that. I hate Kevin Durant. I'm giving him props <laughs> over the leader of my team. I need you to realize that some things are just facts. I guess. But you know what? Switching, switching that from Anthony Edwards when he said, we all got Kevin Durant, but we have Jaden McDaniels. I did, yes. I feel like folks didn't, didn't peep what we were cooking over here. He did not peep what we were cooking. We had a guy. We have a guy that's able. You know what? New age Kawhi Leonard. That's what I'm saying. New age defensive Kawhi Leonard. At least when he was a young pup. We got to say We got to say that at least. Because of as long as he's able to keep guarding the best players on each team, we're, we're on to something. He made Jamal Murray look like a JV player playing against varsity players. That's all I'll say. But as, I, as I'm watching this, as I'm watching this squad, it feels, it feels... Hmm. Let me put it like this. Let me put it like this. I feel like people don't understand how important defense is. And the reason why I bring that up, I remember when Kevin Durant said that offense wins championships. And I feel like that's why he's been in the situation that he's been in for the past like seven years since he's been uh, since he's left the Golden State Warriors. It has been so long since he's left the Golden State Warriors. He's been in the same position because he fucking sucks as a player. I want you to understand. <laughs> he does not suck. Let's not do that. We can go back to Kobe theory. We, we can run this back again. <laughs> Would you ever in life tell your child to play like Kobe Bryant? No, he is not a good basketball player. Kobe worked for Kobe. You would never in life tell anybody to play like Kobe Bryant. If you have the worth ethic like Kobe Bryant. No, yes, it's not I about work ethic. You have to make them shots. <laughs> Fuck a work ethic. If you are missing, it don't matter how hard you work. You can make the 10 shots in a you, row at practice all day, got, run six-hour practices. Nah, no. You got to work hard in those practices or when the game starts to be able to cook and kill these mugs. You think that every player in the NBA doesn't practice? Not as hard as Kobe. No. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay, we don't even have to talk about Kobe. Do you think that every in- player in the NBA practices and practices hard? Kind of. You think that these individuals are staying in shape, half-assing, and staying on a team, half-assing their, their potential? Let's, let's not do this. They're, let's not do it. Rui Hashimura. Let's, let's really not do this. Let's really not do this. If you look at Rui's numbers, I... <laughs> He's all right. I'm he sure he's averaging 26. Let's really be serious. You feel like he could be averaging 26. <laughs> LeBron say, give me that ball. So... Ah, I, I don't know, but I will. So you don't think folks are there just for the check? At least, like I think least, there are people there for the check. I think that everybody works hard, and there are still ass players. That's what I'm saying. That was kind of what my point is. Mm. There are still players that, no matter what, you didn't have that three percent genetic difference to really make you a superstar or even a, a high level player, potential almost all star. But we have that in Kevin Durant, though. Are you saying that the average individual shouldn't shoot for that 3%? I'm saying Kevin Durant sucks because he's not a defensive player. No, okay. that's what you said, too. So okay. I feel like yeah. we're agreeing. Maybe I just went back on my point, but I don't know. Kind Bring of. Bring it around full circle. Ki- Fuck it. Kind of, kind of, kind of. You know, Kevin Durant is just old, so I don't I don't like to hold it that too much uh, against him. So so that's that's one thing. No, but, Katie just sucks all around. I hate uh, but Jaden McDaniels, having a guy like Jaden McDaniels on the squad, I feel like, remember when... MJ was was around, and then he had uh his big bro right next to him, the the long, lengthy, light skinned dude with the with the elongated face, Scotty Pippen. Bingo, bango, bingo, bango. That is the role that Jaden McDaniels has been playing this playoff series. Scotty was a scorer. He literally had the second most points on the team. <laughs> Stop doing this to Scotty. I won't allow it. 
there's 36 and then there's 24 there's 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 different levels to this there's different levels to it but the role that scotty pivot had is the same role that Jaden mcdale is having right now like the fact that he's picking up the best player on the squad just so our youngin can really like score a whole bunch of points i think uh anthony was averaging like what 28 29 so far this playoff series mm -hmm. so as long as we get him to continue to hoop like this there's nothing that there's nothing stopping us there's nothing stopping us and you know what it feels good to be to be on the winning squad it feels feels really good to be on the winning squad i mean i do believe it i just i just hope they can finish out this uh this nice little series here and don't let Jokic get a little steam behind them what do you think is stopping us from uh finishing it out um I don't know, man. If Denver promised that nigga another horse, or that promised that man another horse, <laughs> it might be a little tough these last two games, these last four games. I'm not gonna lie. I was watching. Um, I remember I did this TikTok a couple of days ago when I was talking about how the Timberwolves have set themselves up to lock up everything the Denver Nuggets do besides Aaron Gordon ISOs, and that's really what it's looking like. Like. As I'm watching the Denver Nuggets bring the bring the ball up the court, it seems like they're not letting Jamal Murray even get started with his hoop thing. Because I feel like he is the embodiment of having microwave on all the way up in comparison to everybody else. Because once he gets like two, three shots going, then you see what happens with the Lakers. So it's it's, it's, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. He's the embodiment of having the microwave all the way up. Yeah. What does like, that mean? Like in 2K, you didn't you don't you don't play 2K with the the badge. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, the badge of of microwave just being able to become hot out of nowhere. That's that's the that's the cleanest way to say. It. But as I'm watching it, they do that, and then they have a guy that's slowing down Michael Porter Jr. And I didn't know that you could do that. I really didn't know you could do that because usually he's like a, uh, I'm literally as big as Kevin Durant, and he just dogs everyone around him. But this series, we have a Jaden McDaniel's. So it's it's been nice. It's been nice. And then. Watching the Timberwolves play inside out defense because of I did not notice how big they really were. Pause. Uh, with Rudy Gobert, Nas Reed, Carl Anthony Towns, and honestly, Jaden McDaniels, that's a whole nother conversation. It kind of forces you to have a bunch of shooting and guard work and stuff like that. But the one problem is they do that really well too. I didn't know we had a DPOY candidate on our squad. With Jaden McDaniels, I think he could, I don't think he could hoop like this. So watching this all unfold, it's been nice. And there's no bad defenders. We have no bad defenders. I thought they were gonna expose Conley, but he's hooping too, so it feels nice. Do they ever play Nas, Cat, Rudy, and McDaniels at the same time, and just put Ant in there at the point? Like, oh, uh, they do that in the second quarter. Okay. They they do that in the second quarter. It feels like hell. It really, it really feels like hell. Wow, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like in 2K when you go and bring all the biggest players on the court at one time and then just damn. But they do it in real life, so it feels it's it's wild. It's super wild. But oh uh, honestly it reminded me there's a did you ever see there's a clip of of uh Jalen not Jalen, Jamal Murray walking up with the ball and then Anthony Edwards picks him up and then he goes and throws him to Jenny McDaniels and then they trap him and then he just like loses the ball and he's just looking around like, hey, where's the foul? And the ref is not giving him nothing. That reminded me of my AAU season. I'm not going <laughs> That reminded me of the times I used to play AAU. I don't want to hoop. I, I realized I didn't want to hoop during AAU season. My sophomore... Yeah, my sophomore year of AAU. I remember after my after the varsity season, I was like, you know what? I want to hoop. I want to get a lot better, so I want to start playing AAU. I didn't make the top team. I should have quit. But, hey, I said, you know, I want to hoop for the summer. Tell me why we had our point guard. You know what? To let you know how bad we are, our point guard was 5-6. That should tell you all you needed to know. So tell me why every single team we play against, they would have a starting five of people 6-3 and up. And they expected me to do something on that squad when our fourth guard couldn't even get it off the court. So I definitely feel the hatred that he had. Well, Sometimes you just got to have that dog in. You got to mm. have a little IT. Mm. Would you ever want to? Did you ever play AU? No, I tried to. My mom was like, I'm not signing that shit. <laughs> Walk off. Because then she had to go take me there and pick me up. She's like, I'm not doing that neither. Damn, I feel it. I feel it. Did you ever have, like, a, a teammate that could have, like, drove you around? That, huh? That could drive, not drive you, but, like, uh, teammates would, like, uh, carpool and stuff like that. Was your mom not having that shit either? So, this is the thing, right? The school I went to, let's just get something off, off the bat first. I'm black. <laughs> 
all the people I went to school with are Somali. Now, you may think, that's the same thing. Y'all both colored. No, 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 no. I'm a nigga. To them, at least. Right? So, no. I really, I really, there was no ride. There I, really was I, no ride. I, I feel like you do need at least three white players on the squad to get all the other kids to to, to and from games. I'm going to lie to you. Yeah. You're not even wrong. <laughs> we would have been playing that damn, uh, your school, what, what's that shit called? The Colin Powell Center. Oh, okay. You were going to play real athletics? I would have played there. That yeah, everybody. My whole so we had a basketball team seventh eighth grade. Everybody played AAU mm-hmm. either seventh or I can't remember. And mm-hmm. I was supposed to play, but then yeah, my mom was like, "I'm not picking you up." So I, I feel that. I feel that. you know you saved yourself so much money, bro. Yeah. You saved yourself so much money because I didn't realize how expensive it was until I remember my mom told me, "If I pay for you to play on this team, you're not getting a birthday present or a Christmas present." For three years, two or three years. And you know, she was serious. She was definitely serious. She hasn't bought me anything besides help me with tuition in a couple years. Like, I know she has not paid for anything. And you know, I do not blame her because of paying $3,000 for me to like not even hoop for real is ridiculous. Especially looking back at it, ridiculous. I'm not even going to lie to you. I wouldn't even let my child have that opportunity. <laughs> You got to show me that you have the potential to be the second, third coming of Jordan. If Anthony's really it, third coming of Jordan, right? You got to prove that to me before we even talk. Thousand? Bro, 200 was too much. Like, I give your ass $80, and even then, I'm like, nigga, is you even going to blame her? Like, and you know what? You know what? I wish I could always, I wish I could go back to my younger self and really had conversations with myself because of, I knew I was a hoop, bro. I knew I did not want to hoop. And... <laughs> Honestly, paying that much money for a squad. I remember the squad that we had. Remember, we went out of state for one of these tournaments. You know, fly out, drive out, figure out a way to get all the way to like Kansas or whatever the fuck. Yeah. One of the players said, hmm, I don't want to play anymore. And just didn't play the rest of the weekend. And I'm thinking to myself, if I'm on a team with unseriousness like this, am I also unserious? Is that just a, cold, just a whole team thing? And yeah, it's, it was tough. I also wouldn't pay that much, especially if the team isn't like that. Like, if we don't have, if you're not in eighth grade and you're not a D1 <laughs> prospect and we don't got six of them on the team, what the, what am I paying you three bands for? Bro, I, and that's, that's another thing. That's another thing. I didn't realize if you're playing AU, that means you're playing against people that played varsity during their high school season. And at worst, they're playing JV starting. At worst, absolute worst. The, Fuck that. You playing against motherfuckers that been playing AU since they were six. It's like, it's not the same. I started playing, what, like sixth grade? Yeah. Bro, I'm locked in. I'm just like, if they had told me those numbers, I wouldn't even ask. Like, I never even got that far to even get to the numbers and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And my whole thing is, I got lucky because I transferred to a small school that got me, that let me play varsity just like immediately, right? Playing and then going to other AAU squads and being like, "Hey, when when they show when they ask you what level of of basketball have you played, I'll put varsity, right? <laughs> By varsity and do the varsity are two different. It's not even a conversation, <laughs> considering that I know your whole basketball team too, and I really feel like I could beat all y'all one on one. Except for I've tried to beat Yasin. I don't know what it is. He just got weird technique. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is, bro. When I tell you. I feel like y'all didn't have enough people to have a vars- a JV team. <laughs> the only reason you got to play varsity is because you wanted to play. Like, <laughs> like y'all didn't even have – that wasn't even the sport at your school, bro. Y'all didn't even have football. Like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, uh, if you're willing to sprint, get some rebounds, and actively play defense, come play varsity, my boy. Come, come hoop, come hoop. Did y'all have any Latino people on your team even? <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Nope. 98% of your school Latino. None of them even wanted to play. <laughs> There's always one. There's one per what? game. Yeah. There's one Latino and the one white boy. For every single year, you're getting. Y'all had white people at your school? We had one. I never seen it. Never you in see, life. You ain't seen the the six four dude? Nah, y'all. It was literally one. Yeah, was- I believe you. Because I've never <laughs> seen that ever. <laughs> yeah, no, it was tough. It was it was definitely tough. So trying to compete, I was like, what is going on? How are you running me? We we play the same thing, and then I start looking up their school, right? You have four Division One, one blue chip player, and then we're trying to play the same game. It's different. It's really, it's really tough. It's really tough. So let me take you on my journey, right? <laughs> I decided I was going to lock in seventh grade, right? <laughs> so I'm hooping and shit. I got the most bounce out of anybody in the school. I'm the only person in the school that could touch the rim. I'm thinking I could go off of that. Psych. No. 
our the coach that we had that year is like, I'm gonna let all the eighth graders play because they about to get up out of here and they're honestly so much better than all the rest of y'all. So next year they switch out the coach, everybody gone. I didn't get to play. I'm shitty about it. Next year, I've been playing all summer. I'm pretty decent. I'm not mm. great. I'm pretty decent though. So we get to practice and stuff. We thinking that we finna start running practices. Everybody on the team. I finally made it. Ah, kiki kiki. Our coach didn't practice us he didn't we didn't have practice and he didn't even watch he would open the gym and we would just run fives oh that sounds fun and that's it that would that would be practice that sounds fun did did you did you cook them or how did you figure out where you stood in the hierarchy so we would play every day at recess Mm -hmm. and it was the same people that was playing on the team basically Mm because we had two different courts so everybody that played on the team would play on one court and everybody else that was just doing bullshit could play on the other court so we would run fives every day and one of the um what do they call them behavior people. What do they call them? Deans. One of the oh, deans. That, yeah, yeah. He would just Paris. keep track. He would just keep like a leaderboard, basically. Not no, fucking actually. Not a points, but just like he would just kind of watch and he's like, "Well, this is what everybody's doing." I think I was like tied for third, or I was like fourth, tied for fourth, or something like okay, that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he just kept it like that, and then um, we had him coach one game, bro. Ten times better than our coach. Our coach sucked. Our coach played minor league baseball. You think that he would know anything about sports? Our coach sucked, right? So we had that that one dean. He he ch- he checked there for one game. We why can't you just stay, bro? <laughs> we was at the end of the game. We was up like ten points. He called a timeout just to have us sit down, bro. <laughs> Never have I experienced nothing like this. Did you ever get to the point where everybody on the team was like, "We hate you, coach"? God, uh. no, because we were good. We only lost three games. No, no, no. I mean to the other coach that's um, not the one that subbed, but the one that's your all actual coach. That's what I'm saying. We only lost three games, so like, oh, okay, it yeah. never really became like. A thing really mm. so I, I thought we were good we we went like 15 and 3 we lost to the same team twice in that last game that we lost we beat that team twice already they were close games good games whatever mm-hmm. i'm taking too long to get there okay ninth grade i show up i show up for basketball practice i already know what's going on mm. in the varsity of jv and shit right mm-hmm. that ain't got nothing to do with you but continue so they're, they're, we're trying out for C squad and B squad, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. I end up making B squad. C squad has one player mm-hmm. that plays C squad and varsity because he's a freshman, but he was already playing varsity. Okay, yeah, yeah. When I tell you, when I I, I started playing this shit, I I seen the actual season play out because I heard the shit. I didn't. I just never really thought about it. When I tell you. My freshman year, that varsity team had five D1 players starting and like three D1, D2 players on the bench, along with a seven foot five monstrosity <laughs> that kind of sucked a little I bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah, sucked yeah. a little bit, but he was there though mm-hmm. to scare the other team. Yeah. One actual NBA player. And then like four dudes that like, honestly, if they wanted to, one of them's playing Drew League right now. Uh, like, it's so serious how serious that basketball team was. And once I really realized that, once I saw this man get a triple-double in a finals game in Target Center in high school, I said, you know what? I'm not cut like that. I'm not. I'm, it's not me, bro. These who, six foot eight who individuals. Who the, the triple-double? Because the only motherfucker that I remember getting the triple-double is, is the Tyus brothers. <laughs> bro, I tell you, this man was like two rebounds away from getting a triple-double. Mr. Gonar Mar. I, I watched this man drop like 28, 10. Like, it was so fucking crazy, bro. I said, this is what you're doing in high school in a finals game at that. It's not even like you're playing a trash team. You know what? Y'all got that, bro. Y'all got that. I'm not even cut like that. And I got to get up at 6 a.m.? I got to be there at 6 a.m. for practice? Yeah, bro, no. bro, understanding that there's so many different levels to this hoop shit. Because it's like, let's, you know, let's, let's start off early. You were talking about how there's a youngin that played on the C squad but also played in the varsity. Yeah. I didn't know... That you could technically play varsity once you hit seventh grade. Mm-hmm. So once I start getting into AAU season, we we talk about oh I played varsity this year. Da, 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 da. This one youngin, we moved up. He played. He's playing 16U with us. I was like, oh shit, where you go? He's like, oh no, I I, I go to this middle school. Yeah. And I'm like, why are you? Who is it? Who is this little? You know, we we just wanna we just wanna dump him. I'm just gonna use my muscle and I'm just gonna like stick. Da, 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 da. Some more our tryouts is going. Let me let me paint the scene even more. He didn't need to go to tryouts. That's the thing that blew me the most. NK, we had two of them. We had two of them. <laughs> Been groomed <laughs> since they was in seventh grade, but continue. And that's the thing that, that blew me because I was like, oh, so you literally just wanted to pull up 
just to prove a point. Yes. You just wanted to prove a point. Yes. And that's how I know there's different levels to this hoop stuff. Because you gotta want to destroy your other individuals to really be a hooper for real. Yes, that's man. not me. That is not me. So while we're getting through tryouts, he goes and he pulls up. We run in fives. Is the drill is you pass in and then it's just spritz. So he goes, he pulls up. He goes, one dribble beats the other person, hezzy, and then dunks it. Keep in mind, this nigga is like 5'9 at most. 5'9 at most. And you got juice? I ain't never seen nobody dunk that wasn't the age of 17 before. And you're telling me you, you, a, you a 15-year-old jumping like this? A 14? No, nah, that's ridiculous, bro. There's different levels to this hoop stuff, bro. It's not fair at all. <laughs> when I saw, like... Like I heard people talking and stuff. Like they used to have sign-ins in our uh, in this little atrium and stuff, mm-hmm. right? So it's like I get it. Like it's not it's not a joke. Mm-hmm. There are re- very real athletes here. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. have a little sign-in. They have it. Rec- I don't know if it's televised or recorded. I don't mm-hmm. know what they was doing, but it's like hell is serious. When I saw these individuals go for the fifth championship. <laughs> And they didn't even like it's not like they just won. They whooped. Like they beat them so bad, they're like, Y'all gotta move up a conference. Y'all gotta fight y'all gotta go against bigger schools because it's not fair. Are we all two or three A? I can't even remember. Cause why the fuck weren't y'all playing against Suggs? That's the real conversation, bro. Why were y'all playing against Suggs? The last step we had was to play uh that Champlain Park bracket, whatever that is. Mm-hmm, the the four A squad. Four A. So yeah, we were three A. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, bro. That's and that's that's another thing that pissed me off. When there's like NBA players inside your like section and you know you have to beat them before you even like think about going to the target center so for three years for three years i knew that we weren't going nowhere because there's a nigga going to gonzaga right across the street bro you got nba players taking notes next to you and now i gotta go try to show him up in practice <laughs> so i look like i deserve a, the last bench spot like and that's the that's the that's the kicker bro you're doing all this to never see the light of the court ever you gotta take pictures and you might get a ring up. so yeah no ah oh, like i would have had to been doing 360 windmills <laughs> and all of that bro like this shit is actually crazy how like how serious like we had a nice little run there mm-hmm. we used to be like that with football too mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. When I used to tell you, people ask me what high school I go to, and I tell them, be like, man, we used to be scared of y'all in football. <laughs> duh, duh. Everybody would just randomly say that. Oh, damn. Bro, you bro, you gave what about uh, what about homeboys PTSD? Because any single time anyone brings up Neil cell, he like genuinely gets a vein in his forehead every single time. And I don't blame him, bro. I don't blame him. You could only take losing by 30 so many times. <sighs> but back to the uh, trying to get to the state tournament. It's all that's the thing that blows me the most because of I feel like if you're almost on your way to go to the league, you should be playing a whole different style of basketball than the individuals that just want to go to college for fun. I feel like they should restructure it so that if they can prove that you're that good, they just have like a McDonald's All-American school. And y'all just play each other. Don't even mess up my chances to try to look good and develop. And that's the thing that pissed me off, too, because all I ever wanted from high school was so I could take one picture inside Target Center and then maybe get a high five from an NBA player. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Oh, nope. <laughs> it's not in the cards, man. You know how good of a like I think about that sometimes too. I played big most of my career. You know how good of a fucking point guard I would have had to be to even have a chance Bro. in college. And you know what? That's the thing that blew me the most because that was the reason why I transferred from my freshman year of high school in the first place. Because they're like, "Oh yeah, come come play center." And I was looking around. I'm like, "Wait wait wait! I see your center. He's taller than me." But shorter than the other nigga that's actually getting minutes. <laughs> and you want me to go post up at 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, is that not ridiculous? It is a bit ridiculous. <laughs> Especially, and this this is the thing. This is the year where we had, um, the state had Matthew Hurts, uh, who some other huge giants. There was like five, there was five giants in the state of Minnesota that you would have to go through to get a ring. Or to even, like, make it far in the playoffs. So I'm like, why would I try and do this just so that I just lose all my skill by the time I'm a, I'm a senior in high school? I know people make this joke all the time, but hear me out. <laughs> Can you imagine waking up at 8 a.m., ass crack in the morning just to go do schoolwork for four hours, <laughs> fill up on pizza and chocolate milk, do another three hours of school, and then go 
check into a game and get dunked on by Chet Holmgren. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what is this? Like, that's not even right. Y'all should have your own shit, bro. Why are you even messing with me? Bro, my brother would have went to the my brother would have went to the state, but he had to see Vinny Haha. He's never been so upset in his whole life. It's not fair. I gotta I gotta fill up on damn cheese uh 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 uh, 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 uh what they do to the shit, uh damn steam cheeseburgers. You ever had like they're so cafeteria burgers, I hate them. I gotta fill up on steam bro, burgers and Izzy's. Bro, not even this not even the cheeseburgers, the fucking bread with cheese inside of it, bro. This stale cheese that when you pull it out and dip it it's some day old sauce. No. I gotta fill up on a disgusting cold turkey sandwich, <laughs> and then go check in and try to play Tyus Jones. Like, bro, bro, you know what? Speaking of media, I was I didn't so I didn't think Jalen Suggs was that good. I definitely I thought he was just a bigger athlete than everyone else because he was like six five, playing the point guard, just swole. Uh, so I'm like, oh, my brother could be able to like play some D. Mm -hmm. Game starts. He goes, he goes, he drives into the to the paint and he just backs it up, tween tween. Turns around and shoots it from the corner. You could shoot? Oh, no. We're, they're going to lose. They're definitely going to lose. And to find that like, he wasn't even the best player on their team is ridiculous to me. Just ridiculous. I think Chet had a, a quadruple, triple, double. And there was 10 blocks. And the fact that he's going to the league and doing this in the playoffs. And then he will still play to this same turn with my brother is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, I think we should treat those people like, you know how they have alternative school? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like if you just scoring a little too high in them games, you know, <laughs> alternative you a, hoops. <laughs> you scoring a little too low in them test scores, you get an alternative school. You know, you you acting up all the rest of the stuff. It's like if you're a little too golden boy, <laughs> McDonald's All American School. Just go hoop with Bronny and them. Well, don't even waste. Don't even waste everybody else's time. Oh God, bro! It's like this is the only opportunity I had to shine in high school, and you are gonna ruin that for me because you want to be born with great genetics? Oh, fucking bitch ass. <laughs> Six seven at the, at the age of thirteen. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I got a forty inch vertical. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's 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 definitely tough. And the funny thing is, once um once Jalen and Chet both graduated, <laughs> that school, the school that my brother went to, they won three straight championships just because those those motherfuckers left. And this is a, that's that's crazy. That's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that little bit of genetic difference, that one individual, and that's the thing that makes it crazy to me is understanding it in like perspective of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Like Chet's not even like a top twenty player. <laughs> you never had a chance to be to any team he was on in, in a regular setting though. Like, 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 bro, bro, you had no chance to beat beat his team when he tried. <laughs> not even to mention when he was half assing it. Ah, oh, how much minutes we had? Uh, Forty minutes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <sighs> Do wish you took basketball more seriously. Here's the thing. I feel like if I could have took basketball as serious as I could possibly think, mm -hmm. I still never would have made it anywhere because of shin splints. <laughs> ah, yep. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. either way, I could have been the coldest, most ball handling this. I could be a six foot Kyrie. I still think my shin splints would have just been the end of it. Ah, I feel it. That's the reason why I stopped running track. That was the reason I stopped running track. And that's just my shins. We, mm. I didn't even got messed up knees from all that hard stops and all the rest <laughs> of it. Like, I would have just been injured. Oh, my God. No, I feel it. I remember when I was running track, uh, freshman year, I played uh, varsity for for a big school. So I was like, hey, I was actually nice at this, right? Every single day at practice, I would have to ice and heat and stretch and tape and all that every single time. And then when I transferred to the school I was going to, I was like, oh, you get a chance to be a superstar here. You'd be able to run, do all that. I wasn't doing it. No, I, I couldn't continue to do it because of destroying my body to barely be all right is ridiculous to me. That part is ridiculous. Yo, we got all these cures and stuff. What, 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 what's the science community doing for shin splints? Why is this a problem I still have in the 21st century? That's dumb. I hate this. <sighs> there's there's like tape you can put on it to help, but ew, it's tough. It's I should be tough. able to go to a massage place. They put some red light on my shit, <laughs> and then I feel fine. Yeah, that's fair. Give me a pill and call it a day. It, it should just regenerate. What is that smell? It's getting stronger. It has to be a body, bro. <laughs> Like what is something's dead? They bro. don't clean the the. Roof. Nah, something's dead. It's not. That's all moving water. I think. Not that. This. No, I think that's all moving water. Like that's a little dam right there. I think. Oh, and they just closed off for a bit. I think so. Interesting. Interesting. Like interesting. Something. Somebody dumped a body down here, bro. It stank. Mm. Oh my goodness. There's so many parts of. 
<laughs> you know what? Since we're about 40 minutes in, they can't demonetize us now. While well, I was in Colorado, we were, we were hiking. And the one thing I was thinking to myself, you could really dump a body anywhere in the state. Anywhere in the state. Because there's like so many big ass mountains and there's so many like trails and there's so many like slight offshoots of all these spots. So literally all you have to do is do it in the winter and then just go a hundred not even a hundred bro go two miles that way and then no one has ever walked there ever because the mountain is so huge so yeah no that is some nightmares for you for you if you ever like hiking i think it's harder than you think it is you remember when that guy tried to kill his girlfriend and they were like bro like your story wasn't even kind of believable <laughs> <laughs> you remember this a couple years ago it was all over the like for weeks this shit was all over the news he took his girlfriend to like i think i don't remember if they went to that place in yosemite where you could kill people or they just went to yosemite okay but he just like killed his girlfriend and he's like oh i don't i don't know she went missing or something i don't know where my girlfriend went his <laughs> story was terrible he had his phone on him the whole time it was a whole like they were like we know everywhere you've been we, had, we saw people saw you we follow your tire track like everything Follow your tire tracks. You know what? That's that's why I'm glad I'm not crazy for real. Because if I could not get away with nothing, not a damn goddamn thing, I could see myself posting up with a video talking about how my day is going the third day after doing it, bro. You know, if you're crazy enough, it might just work. Ah, oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Dexter with it, you know. You mm. ever see that? Yeah, I saw I saw some of Dexter. I saw some of Dexter. Um, the one that I'm watching right now is Barry. Have you watched Barry? He's like that's a, the one with uh, Bill Hader. If that's his name. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It's good. It's it's very fake decent. It's very fake decent. It's very fake decent. Uh, but how are you doing, my boy? You know what? I'm doing pretty good. But I know you didn't want to talk about this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I don't like how everybody is trying to make it seem like Kendrick is just out here landslide winning. We're not going to get too deep into it. I know everybody's sick of it. I am too. I'm not going to lie. They are indeed not like us. It did go hard. I need some proof to substantiate these claims. Because here's the thing, I'm low key okay with this being the end of hip hop. We could just have this be the end credits, and then everybody just move on to something else. We start having fun again. Everybody starts dancing. I'm okay with that. We could just have this be the end. Cause I try to listen to Red Rum after listening, like, cause you know our rap caviar. They got uh, not like us, and then Family Matters, mm -hmm. and then Euphoria. I, I keep listening to just the first part, and then Red Rum comes on, and I'm like. Bro, this don't even hit. Like, it's not even to say making all these general threats. No, nah, I need a direct, bro. It's not even Who's, to say. Who is you talking to, bro? I'll just say no. I don't want no more evidence. I don't want no nothing. Let's just Drake just go to the side, drop one last album, address it twice, and then ride it off to the sunset to end this twenty years of nonsense. You know what I would be okay with if they just kept like they could keep the feud going mm -hmm. but just stop giving me so much content at once have it be like every spring y'all drop like one song like, on each other I you could be as direct as you want to if you want to just drop a hot song with a couple bars i'm okay with it but just like one a year and then everybody moves on how about that and that's that's honestly honestly i would not be so annoyed of this rap beef if they did literally just went that route because of i have been swiping on tiktok for the past three four days and every other tiktok is either the sound of one of these songs or to them talking about one of these songs or them talking about another person talking about these songs and that is terrible i'm over it i'm done it's cooked i've probably scrolled about five miles worth of content on this one topic <laughs> it is crazy to me that people have so much to say after the fact i thought that the videos at first were a lot it's that after the fact i sent you that video yesterday with that dude that worked with kendrick and drake mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he was some singer in the early tens or whatever and mm -hmm. he was like uh you know what this rap thing isn't for me i'm white let me stay in my lane that, that's literally what you said in the video you know what? real quick even on that that's one of the main aspects of this beef that it, that i'm glad everyone is finally noticing this has nothing to do with y'all this is a whole other community and the fact that everyone outside of it has every single thing to say is why i'm glad it finally happened so we can all recognize how corny this shit really is you're not entirely wrong i do agree with you mostly <laughs> I do think it's corny. However, I feel like one thing that we need to talk I about. I saw my teacher talk about this. This is corny. This is corny. You're the 60. Te the what teachers continue? have to talk about it. While your students show up and they all talk about Kendrick Drake, Kendrick Drake. Is it the praise? You got to talk about it. <laughs> do you ever take into consideration the lyrical content of these songs? Because 
So every Kendrick song mm-hmm. is very meticulously put together for Drake. You could call it meticulous. Maybe Kendrick is just a du- double entendre god. He just it's just simple. It's it's like regular speaking to him. But then Drake has to address everybody. Mm-hmm. 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 Drake did something clearly because he's not mad enough when he's responding to everybody. He really isn't. He just basically telling him, I fucked your bitch, I fucked your bitch, I fucked your bitch, I fucked your bitch twice. (laughs) You wish you were me, I fucked your bitch. No, yeah. That's his whole thing. Mm -hmm, Kendrick mm -hmm. is like, legit, I hate you. Isn't one of the lines in the song is a thin line between love and hate and let me say I'm your biggest hater? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he said, I'm the biggest hater. He Mm should have just said, I'm your biggest hater. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I think it's to the point where we have to say, I think Drake was so up already. Mm Mm-hmm. That you can't, you, no amount of tracks would have ever made it a level playing field. He, and maybe it's just the way that Kendrick writes, but doesn't he just sound so mad? Like, he just sounds so bad. If I was him, I would be just as bad. You know what? You know, you, you cook for a little bit. I'll be right back. Hold on. I think the only thing that would make sense to me about Kendrick being upset is if he genuinely just loves hip hop so much that he's genuinely just upset that Drake is kind of taking the culture as somebody that's not necessarily. Uh, that doesn't necessarily identify as black or with black culture or didn't grow up as an American at all. Like, you, none of that is, like, your realm. But then, it, like, I, I could understand why you're upset about that, especially when people say, like, Drake just takes everything. Like, you you could understand being around somebody and that anything you say, they just start doing the shit. That's annoying, bro. There's dick riding and then there's what Drake does. But the reason why I'm feeling so vindicated recently you ever heard this song? Until I found it's really just me. I don't think so. Have you heard this song? America. I think so. The two songs I haven't have I just showed him was Duckworth and XXX on Damn. I remember I was riding the car with some of my homies, right? They passed me the ox. So I do what I always do. I go, I play music that I like. I go, I put on duck work. The su- no, I put on XXX. And the song gets through it, right? And halfway, halfway, they're like, hey, man, turn this shit off. And I've never felt so attacked in my life. Because of after there's a there's a beat switch. And then they, Kendrick just goes crazy. Telling a story is fire. Mm-hmm. And then they turned it off to play. It was either Lil Easy Vert or Drake or something. But it literally just sounded like music that just did not matter. And at that point, I realized that Kendrick deserves so much more than he's ever gotten. And for the fact that people are so willingly be able to throw this actual good music away is gross to me. It's grody. I feel like what people are getting into now is the argument between rap and hip hop. Rap has always been less popular. Point blank period. There's no way around it. Mm-hmm. And it just will be. It mm-hmm. just is what it is. Mm-hmm. Your your experience, like it's kind of like country music, or not even country music. I'm trying to think of a better example. What's like a niche experience kind of music? You know, is it just exclusive to rap? Like yeah, damn near, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure white bitches got some kind of music that's like, oh, I grew up. My my dad was rich. Uh, like I don't know. <laughs> There's a different form of country that is talking about it. Not so much the rich aspect, but like the poor white version. Like the the is hillbilly a uh, 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 insensitive term? I don't think so. Let me know, white folks. Let me know. I don't think it's fair to compare rap versus hip hop, especially being that hip hop is just more applicable. Like a Kendrick song with a hook on it is not the same as Drake singing the whole song and then with a hook on. You know, okay. it's not as applicable. Melodies are more. I feel like. Uh, widespread like I don't need to know the words to certain songs Mm -hmm. to sing along or like I don't even need to know the language yeah especially when you got a melody now you Mm -hmm. doing all that that rapping in Spanish ah y'all got that (laughs) y'all got that I ain't even gonna try (laughs) you ever listen to um, Suave oh man I don't listen to Spanish music man Suave it's a it's a great it's a great track Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. rapping in Spanish impossible singing You know what? I might try. Have you listened to like French music and stuff like that? No. Uh, locking on the French. I'm against the French as a people. Even the black ones? I'm an American. Yes. Damn. The black ones be cool. But especially (laughs) the black ones. Go back to your country. Stop giving them all these. uh, What is the Super Bowl version of soccer? 
World Cups. World Cups. You can't keep keep giving these white countries World Cups and having all black squats. You that ever shit, think about that? that? Shit, you pissing me off. If so much. everybody <laughs> just went to where their family left, y'all already got the bread. Like y'all already should be up. You just take all that bread and just like just do what you were already doing. But Doctor Umar is wrong though. What's <laughs> <laughs> let's really be serious like, bro just let's do what really you are already serious. doing and watch yeah. how shit just change oh bro y'all gonna have the best soccer team in the world R- real quick who's the person Mbappe that, that they're trying to give him damn near a billion dollars to go play with the, the Saudis yeah go do that and then bring that money home bring the money home I think that contract is long though it's like 10 years isn't he like already 30 something no he's like 27 26 cause they just got Ronaldo I know Ronaldo's 30 something He's mm-hmm. he got a 10 year yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but, hey, crazy. Do people play soccer until their fifties? Uh, Messi's thirty eight. He's he's thirty nine, thirty eight, or he's forty. He's he might be forty. He's either he's from thirty eight all the way to forty one. He's one of those ages. So that yeah. is crazy. I don't know why I thought all the goats are like the same age. Yeah, it's the same the same time frame. Yeah, they're they're tends to they tend to be reborn around the same age. That is a crazy fit though. <laughs> no, it's just weird. It's like. Brady, Braun, mm-hmm. Messi, mm-hmm. Ronaldo's like a year off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, man, that there got to be something with that age group that just that millennial age group that just just fight against Father Time. But yeah, no, it's. I think the government was running a program back then where they just got <laughs> super athletic people to breed. Can I tell you about China, how they made Yao Ming. Did you did, did you did I ever tell you about China and how they did um, Yoho Shitano and uh, how they created him? It's two Olympians together. Soho, Owatani. The baseball player? Yeah. He's Japanese. Well, yeah, that's fair. I'll cut it down. He is <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> it's very Japanese. You know, baseball is like the biggest sport in Japan. I believe it. That's fucking weird. Why? Nobody else plays baseball except for us. And Japan and the Spanish niggas. But fucking, um, what's the cricket? Yeah. yeah. Cr- cricket has got the same problem. It's, it's so it's, it's just India. <laughs> it's just India and then England. No. Are you serious? Yeah, it's India and England. I do mostly see in- Indians and English people playing. Yeah. <laughs> Their LeBron James is very, very Indian. He's a very Indian dude. And he's cooking. I watched one game. That motherfucker is tough. He is tough. Honestly, I feel like we are just talking about how it feels to be in high school and watching like people that actually are good at this thing. But imagine being a pro and then seeing a pro's pro. That's fucking ridiculous, bro. That's actually ridiculous. You spent all your life trying to get this good and then there's this guy that just kills you. Or even worse, a guy that's not even technically that good goes and kills you. Have you ever, talk, have you ever heard of people talking about Avery Bradley? I don't even know who that is, but... Oh, I don't remember Avery Bradley. Basically, imagine Drew Holiday before Drew Holiday. Okay. Yeah. He was... He was doing something crazy. Like he he was killing Donovan Mitchell to yeah. uh, who's the guy with the podcast? He used to play on Minnesota, but then he he left. Teague. Yeah, Jeff Teague killing him. But yeah, no, he's 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 killing him. He's definitely killing him. I've always wanted to ask somebody like Jeff Jeff Teague. It's funny that you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Like, what is it like playing basketball your whole life, being the best player on every team, and then you show up and you're not even the third option? Like you're almost out the league. Like, what is that like? <laughs> Like, you're still, because you're definitely 10 times better than anybody on the street. Mm -hmm. You're 10 times better than anybody at the park. You're five times better than anybody in college. But once you get to the NBA, ah. Bro, you're damn near five times better than everyone on this planet besides 200 people. There's literally only 200 people in this planet that's better than you. It's it's depressing, but uh, the the checks are nice. The checks, the checks are nice. I f- it's funny how you answer like you experienced this. I, I really want to ask because I just think it's like you literally lived your most of your life, if not your whole life, you were the best player on every team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Damn. I, 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 that does feel kind of ass. I'm not going to lie. That does sound kind of ass. Oh, my God. Especially if you're one of those people that are like very psychotic when it comes to the thing that you're good at. Um, exactly. Bro. Like, <laughs> that's probably why Miles turning out here building Starcrafts and stuff, or spaceships and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, I got to I got to do something. It's, it's the only thing that like brings you back to Earth because it's like. So I Luca's ranked in league. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> um, I remember I was talking to one of my homies that are like actually good at this like basketball thing. Like he ended up going D1 all that. Mm-hmm. Did he go to the league? Yeah. No, he went to the league. Yeah. No. Damn, that's crazy, bro. Really went to the league. But damn, um, his tire <laughs> flat as shit. I know he's shitty, bro. 
That's why your bike is so hard. Fucking biking uphill with a flat tire sounds like hell. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> but he was talking about how like every single time he touches a basketball and then he puts his feet on the court, he wants to kill everybody. He wants to prove a point every single time. Yeah. To the point where it's like the first play he 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 always does, he always gets a right hand layup to let them know I could always score on every single possession. Then he goes left to show that there's really nothing he could do. And then he goes and makes sure he gets his teammate uh, involved so that everyone else on the team knows, oh, yeah, don't worry. We could always score on every single possession. And to be that methodical on something as simple as that, ridiculous. That is ridiculous. <sighs> you know, know what I think is even crazier? Because mm-hmm. I feel like it's kind of like being a child star, right? Mm-hmm. What's it like when you're like LeBron and then you're just like you don't play anymore? Like, what is that like? You're still Tom Brady, but, like, the reason is, that you're Tom Brady no longer even really matters. Is this post having, like, a spectacular career? Because I feel like that's two completely different conversations. Especially if you literally had one blip versus an individual that led and then he went to the stars. Was at the stars for a little bit and then he just, like, dropped completely off the map. Because of there's one thing to really... It's, it's always one thing when it's just been one moment in your life. But if you've, like, put everything you have as a human to have this career and it just doesn't work. It's not about it not working. They're old. They have to quit. Exactly. It you doesn't did. work anymore. Yeah. Them trying. They basically, basically, I was talking about this at, uh, at the gym this morning. I was talking about LeBron. I was like, if LeBron has another year when he just gets bounced out in the first round... That's not LeBron like. That's, it, it doesn't. It doesn't feel the same. It just doesn't feel the same, especially when you've literally been the best player in the world for ten to thirteen years. For twenty years, you're right. LeBron has been the best player in the world, but I just don't think. I'm. I'm more so saying for like LeBron or like a Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Like the only like gratification it seems like you get because like think about what lebron is sacrificing to play this game like you remember when rudy had that baby this is like like it was a long time ago you remember rudy had that baby and everybody was like you went to go birth your child what the fuck like real quick before you get on your point if that was you you're dumb that is an insane sentence what do you mean just go have another one get off the gooning stop gooning but continue But I'm saying, like, when you got people saying stuff like that to Rudy and you got people like LeBron where it's like, no, your life actually has to work that way. Like, it yeah. has to. Like, there mm-hmm. are you're going to miss birthdays. Mm-hmm. You're going to miss shows. You're going to miss practices and, and not, games. Not even to mention that. You have to actively shape everyone else in your life. Around your life. <laughs> exactly. And then you have to make sure their image is holding up to the standard that you need them to. Because of if you're bullshitting and you're next to me, that means I'm bullshitting. Yeah. And we can't let that slide. Yeah. Especially if there's so much money that's like tied up into this in- individual's name and likeness, it's tough. Like, I don't know, man. It just seems like I wouldn't want those problems. <laughs> <laughs> like when you 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 build your whole life around like this is what I do. Mm-hmm. Period. It mm-hmm. literally does not matter what else is going on. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, you damn near stop being a human to continue to do your quote unquote purpose. Yeah, they're yeah. like a regular season game. I'll go deliver that baby. Playoffs? Yeah. Just hold it. Just hold it, bro. Just hold it. <laughs> you tell your wife, just take deep breaths. That's all you can do. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, have the doctor just sit there with his hand. <laughs> just, just hold it in there for an hour. I'll be right back. <laughs> Controller disconnect. That's all you can tell. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, have the baby, throw it back in so I can come in and watch it. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Because I'm not missing that moment in my life. I'm not. <laughs> oh, my God. And that's, that's another thing. Especially when you have kids. They, like, damn near have to hate you. Like, they will hate you for, like, 14 to 22 years until they get to a point where, like, you know what? I understand. And they will never forgive you for it, though. Even if their whole life has been pampered and just beautiful because of the sacrifice that you are making in your own life. I wish that we as humans could see things more objectively like that. Because you would like to think, (laughs) like, Bronny, what the fuck do you have mad to be about in life? What are you upset about in life? You could do literally anything. What are you mad about? But at the same time, it's like, I didn't ask for this. Like... You have full rights to be as bad as you are for everything that's in your life. Yeah. Especially when it gets to the point where it's like you could have everything, but now you're expected to have everything because of the whole world gave you everything. And yeah. now there's all this unearned pressure that you didn't even really want in the first place. Like you can't go be a hermit. You literally can't be a hermit anymore. Or like that option is just not there. It's just not there. You 110% can. You telling me Bronny has to be in the public eye? Uh, Fucking cab. 
I guess. Ronnie doesn't have to play basketball. Yeah, that's that's true. Like, that's, but I feel like it's more of a it's more of a knowing the type of life that you could have had will always be in the back of your mind when you're in a situation like that. I think Ronnie has been experiencing it for long enough. He mm-hmm. already knows what the life is gonna be like. Mm, okay, okay. Everybody that's just being like, "Man, fuck you and your dad. You suck." <laughs> like, you know what? I wouldn't want to play either. <laughs> Bryce, if I Bryce, I'm playing. Like if I was Bryce, because Brody got all the hate. Bryce oh, just like man. it seemed like he just kind of skirted everything. <laughs> Motherfuckers forgot that he's literally a, like a junior or a senior now in high school. Yeah, six foot eight junior or senior. Like, it's, it's a it's a fire life. It's definitely a fire life. Definitely. I've never heard anything about this boy ever, <laughs> ever. The only thing I've ever heard about uh, Bryce is that. He's good as fuck. That's all. That's all I've heard. That's it's all like, I've heard. If I was Bernie, I'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna just go disappear for a little while. See what that's like. Yeah. Because you're it. never gonna be able to really live. Like, I always think about that too. Like, when you're famous, like, do you ever just like want to dip off to some city where nobody knows who you are, so you can just like be regular? They definitely do that. You you can go to like um, Dublin, like anywhere that's not here. Yeah, literally, literally. If you're like. You don't even need to be, like, too crazy popular, especially if it's, like, a thing like what we're doing where we're, like, actively curating a small portion yeah. of a community, even if it's a million people. But it's, like, such a niche million people that's, like, well, if I go to, like, Florida, I probably will be okay as long as I don't go to, like, what's the, what's the, what is that city called? Like, Miami? Or, like, a, where's PG County? Is that LA? PG County? Yeah. I or is that? no idea. No, that's Maryland. PG County is Maryland. But, yeah. As long as you don't go to, like, a city where, like, I guess a lot of black folks are black and this age group and likes this and likes this is where they're at. So, no, that's a, fine. That's a good point. I see a lot of YouTubers. They be like, they be like, sometimes I'll be walking in a mall. I see a group of motherfuckers. I get nervous because it's like, <laughs> y'all look like my demographic. <laughs> you definitely know who I am. Damn it. It's like, y'all all between the ages of 13 to 17 and you're brown. Ah, man. They going to try to take a picture with me. <laughs> I remember having that conversation with my older brother, especially I have a nephew now. I'm like, damn, when he's like 10 and his friends be like, oh, I know your uncle. Honestly, I want that for like two years. And then after that, that might be a little OD. That might be a little bit OD. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I always wonder folks that are like related to like a Kevin Hart or something like that. How not so much irritating, but like, um. What's the word? What's the word? A nuisance it is in an individual's life just because of the same person that you know or related to. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like it's only new for so long. Yeah, so it might only fair. come up when like, like let's say like at work. Mm-hmm. It might come up like when you get there and then whenever a new person comes. But okay. other than that, you'll probably never hear about it because it's like it's mad weird to talk to me about some <laughs> dude every day. Every day? That's weird. <laughs> you got three questions. <laughs> you got three in it. <laughs> I feel like anybody would feel weird doing that. Yeah, though. yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Let me talk to you about your uncle. You literally only see once during Thanksgiving and once during Christmas. Yeah, that's fair. That's like, fair. if that, you might not even be that deep in the fam for real. <laughs> You're a tertiary. <laughs> it's like, I've met him. I've been to a show, but we not like, we not like cool or nothing. <laughs> It's not even uncle. It's this person's brother's girlfriend's little brother. <laughs> hey, man, the way that these people family be moving when you get some money, it could be uncle. It could be brother. Like, yeah, okay. Everybody right. get to act a different. It's like, yeah, I ain't seen that motherfucker in like a decade. <laughs> but, hey, you got to have all the bad so you can enjoy the good. Because if you tell me I can get a McLaren, but my, my, my cousin's a little bit weird to me, I'll take it. You want to take it? I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I want nice interactions over over stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Especially a fucking McLaren. Ew. Not even like stuff for the short term. Not even like you get like three years of like spending a hundred thousand dollars per month. I really sat and thought about it. The, <laughs> I don't like. There's not a ton of stuff that I really want that's like expensive. Because I don't really do like the designer bullshit. Like maybe um, I would if I had money. But you like, want to get like a car collection? You won't start motorcycling out of no reason, just for randomly? I've seen enough people go broke over cars, spend enough money trying to fix cars, and then they buy. Or the people like DDG, you buy four cars, but you only ever want to drive one. Yeah. And yeah. then you just have the other three. you like, I spent $900,000 on these three cars I don't drive. And not even to mention the $100,000 of insurance that you're going to have to pay for those cars. Yeah. So it's like I always see people like that, and I think I think I could really get by. I want my truck, and then I want a project car, and uh-huh. I already know what my project car is going to be and everything. So it's like, 
And that's just I'd only do a project card just because I have the money to fuck up. Yeah, that's true. That's like true. I, I have a couple thousand to pour into this and fuck it up and mm -hmm. make it cool or whatever. Mm -hmm. I can make it into a boat if I wanted to. Just just add an extra features. No, I feel that. Like I give me my TRX and that's really kind of all I need. And then. I don't know. Maybe I start like a collection of bat. I want to start collecting um, strains. That's what I want to do. Oh, okay. Would you have like a, a garden in your backyard or some shit like that? I definitely am gonna have a garden. I want a garden of Eden. That's a different thing, right? I want to have like a. Where's the garden of Eden? We will get to there. Okay. Uh, I want a periodic table where it's either, either I have all the seeds of like popular strains on like a periodic table kind of thing in like the wall, mm -hmm. or I get like buds and I put them in like um what they call it shit enamel or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah whatever that shit's called epoxy mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then just have it like that right oh but okay. in the backyard i want the garden to eat and right so i want one side where it's like all like fruiting plants and i want the mm -hmm. other side to be all like uh poisonous and like all that kind of stuff so like kind of like poison ivy or like nightshade and they have like they have this tree in like virginia stuff the sap from the tree like if it rains and you're sitting under the tree it'll burn your skin so like the sap from the tree is like like kind of like toxic and stuff so i want one side to be like all fruit and stuff and the other side to have like maybe like roses and stuff in the front because it's like you know kind of like just like a dangerous side why why not i feel it i feel it yeah i have the money to do yeah. like when you have the money to just, yeah, just, just that's, like, that's what we were talking about right <laughs> yeah that's fair and that's i have fair. one side that's like all fruit trees and stuff i have all kind of mangoes you know what i mean kind of mangoes are our damn yeah there is there all, is all yeah. kind of mangoes and bananas and mm -hmm. strawberries and stuff mm -hmm. no because i remember i was uh people keep asking me why i want to do this content thing and i'm like imagine if you had forty thousand dollars to throw at something because it's a business expense that doesn't sound just spectacular. Like, one of the things that I would want in my in my house, I would want a hmm, a one floor condo, a full like imagine like a hmm, a building about that big. But you see the whole floor, all of it, just like the whole floor, like to the point where there's like a downstairs and an upstairs, like like a really big mug like that. Yeah. Get something like that. Get a little house. Not even a little house, like a what's it called? A house that's on like this really big farm, and then cook all like make all my food and stuff like that. But we only go to the farm during like real peak farming times. Yeah, that's something that I would I would really want. Like be able to have all, especially like tractors and stuff like that. I feel like having those type of stuff is cool as hell. Having tractors is cool is a weird thing. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Being in so many people's houses, mm -hmm. that's also turned me off to like having a huge house and stuff like. The biggest house I, I've done, that lady has a staff of three people, and that doesn't include the people that come and clean her stuff Real or quick, the gardeners. Have you ever been to, god damn, have you ever been to um, the, the biggest candy spot, the biggest candy store in the United States? No. In Minnesota? No. There's one where if you're driving towards Marshall, the biggest candy store in the United States, yeah. um, they have full life-size versions of, like, Avengers memorabilia like you can see like the Hulkbuster but it's actually 10 feet tall you see there's like a full on Iron Man suit but it's like literally this tall I'd want shit like that in my house that's that's the question I'd want too you ever see the interview with uh, Bobby and Yachty and just in the corner you just see like this really big statue yeah something like that that's also fire that's just fire too but continue yeah. I think that's cool too. Like I just, I would want like a smaller spot. Mm -hmm. it's just like when you got a cleaning clean all wise. That stuff, yep. Mm -hmm. Like she got like three cleaning ladies that take them a couple hours to clean the house. Then you got three housekeepers, which is like a different thing. And then you got the gardeners. You got us there cleaning the windows. And that's just all the people I see. That's not even like the other like chefs, fucking things like that. Yeah. She does have a a butler's kitchen, so it's mm -hmm. like or a butler like. <laughs> I just don't want them all them people in my fucking house. I just want to let you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I just yeah. want to be able to do stuff. Yeah. I guess it's a little different when you're in an apartment. Mm -hmm. Especially the reason why exactly the reason why I want like a really big apartment because it's like you have all this space, you're able to see all this cool stuff from where you at, but yeah. it's still not too much for two people. Another thing I always hear though too is like, you ever wonder why all these like rappers and stuff got these gigantic ass houses and then they have like 30 people living with them. It's like, bro, being in that big ass house by yourself, you start feeling it. You be like, damn, bro. Like, this what is haunting at this point, yeah. It's sad. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I don't even want to be here. I, I want to go do anything else. Like, if, if there's not gonna be people here, I don't want to be in this gigantic ass, lonely mm -hmm. ass house. Mm -hmm. I'm Scrooge McDuck in it for real. And yeah, having thirty rooms and it's literally just you, and even it's just you and your girl. That's still like so much space for no reason. It's like you got thirty rooms. Fifteen of them are entertainment, and you got to do all of it by yourself. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And that's another reason why I really like doing this content thing, because you could do go-karting, and that's literally just work. And then it's just 10 of your homies go-karting. That's lit. That's lit. Oh. Oh. We got an hour and eight minutes in. You got anything else you want to chat about? Um, you want to talk about your mental health? Your soul? Make sure you get your pet spayed and neutered. I don't think so. All right, bet, bet.